Welcome back to In Business. Ben Bernanke told Congress that the run-up in commodity prices will lead to higher inflation, but he's also saying that job growth remains slow and it'll take years to get back to a normal level of employment. Let's get reaction now to the Fed Chief's testimony from one of the foremost economists in the country. That is Martin Feldstein, professor at Harvard University. He also served as White House Chief Economist during the Reagan administration. Thanks for joining us, Professor Feldstein. We should Good be more be <laughs> we should be more accurate and say that Bernanke sees mainly a temporary rise in inflation from commodity prices. Central banks around the rest of the world uh, think otherwise after they've raised interest rates. Is Bernanke correct? Well, you know, in the rest of the world, especially in the emerging market countries, uh, food and energy prices, which have gone up so much, are a big part of the consumer's bundle, and they're not here. So we will have some small increase, but it is not going to be the kind of problem that it is in other parts of the world. So, Dr. Feldstein, uh, this is John Ehrlichman. If that is the case and the economy is on track and some of the recent data has suggested that, what does that mean when it comes to the idea of another round of stimulus? Uh, the Fed chair, even before today, had, had left that door open. Well, I don't think we should have another round of stimulus, but having said that, I think there there is a mixed picture now in terms of how, how much the economy is on track. There's no doubt that it rose substantially between the third and fourth quarters, but then it started slowing down toward the end of the fourth quarter, and the January numbers are not very good at all. Industrial production fell, um, uh, housing prices continued to decline. Uh, we saw the uh, personal consumption expenditure numbers yesterday. They were actually a negative change. They fell in January. So this is not a strong economy. There hasn't been the pull through from the fourth quarter to uh, the first quarter. So then what did drive the economy's uh, short term blip, at least in the fourth quarter? And is it something that will eventually come back later on this year? The key thing that drove it in the fourth quarter was a sharp fall in the savings rate between the middle and the end of last year. It dropped a full percentage point. And so it was the increase in consumer spending that resulted from uh, reducing savings rather than from additional income. And why did that happen? I think primarily because of the 15% increase in the stock market. So higher and middle income people felt pretty good. They went and they spent more money, but uh, that doesn't mean they'll keep doing it. So right now there's uh, a big debate on when the Fed decides that it's time to start thinking about the next step. And obviously the unemployment rate is a key factor of that. Um, at what level is the Fed comfortable, at what unemployment rate level is the Fed comfortable with starting to think more about increasing rates? I think it would be a mistake to do it in terms of the unemployment rate. I think the unemployment rate is going to come down very slowly. Remember, half of the unemployed have been out for six months or more. There's a big overhang of people who are uh, on, uh, on uh, short weeks, three-day weeks and four-day weeks. So that's going to come down very slowly. And we could start to see pressures building up in a variety of product markets before that. So I think the Fed has to be looking at what's happening to product prices and to inflation rather than to the unemployment rate. Well, Dr. Feldstein, if the Fed's going to be focused on what happens with product prices, as you mentioned, the increase in commodity prices hasn't really filtered down to the consumer level. At what point will we start to see more of it? Uh, I wouldn't do it in terms of commodity prices. I think the real problem is if markets begin to tighten in the U.S., and that's not happening yet. But in the next year or so, we could begin to see bottlenecks in particular product markets here in the U.S. starting to put upward pressure on inflation. But right now, inflation is very low. Unit labor costs were actually lower at the end of last year than they had been 12 months earlier. So I think inflation uh, is domestically generated inflation uh, is really not a problem in the short run. Uh, Professor Feldstein, no surprise to hearing the Fed chair get getting dragged back into the budget discussion, given the importance of the deficit in answering the question of where the economy goes. But obviously, there's a political dance that has to be done when he's addressing those issues. Um, how far can he go before he's gone too far and made it more of a political issue? I think he can certainly uh, tie it back 
to financial markets and to uh, interest rates and the fact that interest rates are abnormally low at this point and that unless progress is made in dealing with those fiscal deficits, uh, those interest rates could rise very sharply. And that would be very much in the spirit of things that Alan Greenspan did and I think that Paul Volcker did in his day. Professor Feldstein, we know that with Republicans pushing for spending cuts and the Democrats, particularly President Obama, arguing back that that would affect economic growth, I wonder if you have any sense of just how much that would hurt economic growth. Uh, Goldman Sachs estimates that it could shave two percentage points off GDP. Is, does that sound high to you? Much too high, sure. What, what's being talked about as I listen to the debate is sort of plus or minus 30 or 40 billion dollars. Uh, whether you have a big cut or a small cut in the coming fiscal year, 30 or 40 billion dollars in a 15 plus trillion dollar economy. So that's not going to have a very substantial impact uh, uh, on aggregate demand and on GDP growth. I think the key thing is to start putting in place some long-term corrections, things that will not just affect uh, current spending in this year, but will actually start to bring the fiscal deficits down in the future. Something like uh, tax code reform, for instance. Exactly. Well, when you say tax cut reform, I think the key thing is to uh, turn to the, uh, the spending that is built into the tax law. Uh, it's not enough to look at spending on the outlay side of the budget. I think we have to look at all of those so-called tax expenditures, the, the special benefits that households and businesses get that are right. built into the tax law. All right. We thank you for your time. Martin Feldstein, professor at Harvard University.